Good morning, folks. Large plasma filament departing lost its grip, began rippling and curling, and released a small CME. We've got a number of stories to get to today, including a solar wind shift, incredible footage of a volcano, Saipan's first tornado, some amazing news stories, Mercury heading in to conjoin the sun in less than one day, full rundown from star to surface, and Thor throwing lightning in the high desert at 240 frames per second. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. Geez, that's boring. No flares in Earth's direction and no eruptions either. Despite the Mercury conjunction afoot, any bursts are likely to fire away from the Earth, with the sunspots in major decay at the moment. Solar wind here. Blue phi angle shifting shows we're about to switch current sheet sectors, with green temperature down below, translated to Fahrenheit, is about a 200,000 degree drop in ion temperature. We're awaiting the stream from the next coronal hole, and despite their latitudes, it is all the same opening of the southern fields. My guess is that it would be the end of them that would make the bigger quakes, as that's where the equatorial concentration is found. Moderate quakes only in the interim, and for those who felt the Macedonian quake, it didn't really seem moderate, did it? Damage to buildings and minor injuries. And even though the global alert is lower now, if we get a big one, a good place to watch might be the connection points for the ridge to the Americas. Right now, there are OLR anomalies at both connection points, but Central America is better. And just remember, no solar alert at the moment, though. We do have amazing lithospheric news, however, the footage coming out of the Indian Ocean paradise is spectacular. There is a reason so many tourists were on hand to capture this lava and fire, because it's one of the most visited spots in the region. Truly stunning images. Now, back to the earthquake forecasting. Again, the global alert is lessened, but if we have a second area of the world to watch, it's the earth spot zone over at the Philippines. Hook Echo also caught blot potential nearby. Those are 12-hour jumps on the wind map, and when you look at enhanced infrared or the water vapor loop, you can see it's just one big rain fest over there. Interesting article out about this year's monsoon shift causing flooding in India. You can compare to last year and see that we have now smashed the 25-year flood level mark and are somewhere between a 100 and a 1,000-year flood event as we start the month. Most of you know that Rosetta is set to crash into 67P at the end of this month. Some details and the crash site can be seen at that article. Incredible article here about solar flare pulsing that has given us all a great reminder about the triggering of the flare initially, having to do with inflows of plasma, which are guided by the umbral, coronal, and even interplanetary magnetic fields, which is why comets, even tiny ones, can trigger activity down at the surface of our star. That was neat from 2003. Folks, that is what is being reported as the first tornado in Saipan. Whether or not it's actually the first one, it was a heck of a sight to see for onlookers. Next, we come to a bit of high desert lightning evolution. The steppe leaders start at the clouds and spastically reach out trying to find the ground. But when it finally happens, it opens the door for the ground bolt to begin first. And that is a rare sight to see. Unless, of course, you live where I do and you can film in slow motion. Yeah. That's just my iPhone, slow-mo capture at 240 frames per second. Actually got a couple different ground leads visible in that sequence. We had a deeper look episode come out around midnight at suspiciousobservers.org. It runs down some of these earthquake location forecasting methods, how OLR integrates earth spots in the global electric circuit, and how those differ from blot energy transmigrations. So much confusion lately, I had to get some of it straight yesterday. And you can also see the 2015 Deeper Looks from last year. Episodes 88 and 89 are on the same topic. If you haven't been to spaceweathernews.com slash challenge recently and seen the update there at the top, it has actually been updated again to include a full chart that has all eight location alerts and a two-page fact sheet for you to get your talking points straightened out. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 3.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.